come to Salt Berm. Lots of people get lost in Salt Berm. I read the script, then we had a call, you know, me and Emerald. I had seen Promising Young Woman that she did the previous of this. I just thought it was so brilliant. And then in the discussions with her, it's always like first time you meet the director, you talk about the film and you just want to be seduced by their vision and their storytelling. She has everything in her head. She knows exactly what she wants to do. The film is quite different from what I've done before in terms of stylistically and in terms of the themes in the film. That was really intriguing. So she has a very unique voice. I think it turned out like a really great working relationship. I always want the film to tell me what it needs. For me, it's not about that I love a certain type of lens and I always want to use that. And that comes from discussions prior the camera equipment is ordered that has more to do with different words. One thing she said was like, she'd like it to look like a wet painting. And other things is that it's like gothic. It's like a vampire story in a way, even though it's not fantasy. It takes place in this huge manner, like a gothic house. She tells the stories in a gothic tradition. So all these things, and with the family being that aristocratic family and the oil paintings that are on the walls there, at the same time, she wanted the film to feel also like you're looking into a dollhouse or through a looking glass. And all of that just made me feel that we want it to be square and not wide. There's scenes that are kind of hard to watch, but like the Baroque painters, they depicted ugly motifs, but with a very pleasant composed shot with a pleasant, beautiful lighting. That was the idea then to try to always walk around the manor, the house and look for how to sort of compose scenes in that type of mindset, which is less traditional cinematic, it's more 20s cinema or 30s, but like where you block the scene, but you don't necessarily move the camera much, rather be economical with the storytelling. The house should feel like it keeps a secret. There's things going on. When the light comes in, it doesn't really reach all the way in, so it's dark and moody and outdoors. It could be really sunny or it could be romantic and beautiful. So we had that contrast to work with as well, where we wanted to lure the audience into the romantic feel of it all too. She kept saying as well words like beauty and ugliness and contrast, which also all the time through the film interacts. When you hear all these things, right, you start to get images in your head and we both also love shooting on film, so that was clear for us earlier that we wanted it to be on film and 35 makes sense for this crispiness of it and not 16. We felt like we should shoot it just 133 silent full aperture super 35 and with spherical lenses. And so then when I tested lenses, I also remembered from when I shot Nutcracker with the Panavision Primos. If any of my movies, it was kind of that type of colors, that type of contrast. So that was kind of an easy choice, actually, in this case. Very solid, but still has its own unique look, actually. And if you get a sound flare, it's like a red ring. It has these sort of characteristics. Generally, I like to work with lenses that are more expressive. In this case, for being clean, but contrasting, colorful, and with the film stock and sharp and interesting, I thought the Primus was the right choice for that. My parents, they've got problems. What kind of, what do you mean problems? I don't think I'll ever go home again. I was fortunate enough to work with smart directors who wanted to break down the scripts into what the scenes are about and the subtext of the scenes in order for us to find the visual language. And that is something I learned more and more. And I think also to focus, make sure that you tell an emotional story. Even if it is a sci-fi or a thriller, it's still the emotional story. I don't necessarily love just one type of films. I love all kinds of films. But the common thread in them is that when I like them, there is an emotional story in there that you connect to. 